in this particular utterance which may guide you to come up to come up with the right response now ask yourself where one is expected to find this particular word author the word portrays so you uh, again agree with me that uh, one is expected to find this uh, to find this particular utterance in uh, literary works the literary artists have their own technical terms their own jargons if one is to write here instead of author if one is to write the word writer this word writer here is very common it's very ordinary but the literary artist they call author is the person who writes novels or composes novels or short story so with the presence of this word now guides you to tell that um, uh, the, the place where one expect to hear such utterance is uh, in your literary work we just move to another uh, expression or utterance now here we go your majesty my client denies all the accusations made against him I said earlier my dear students that um, the correct response you'll be able to tell the correct response by going through uh, through the words used in that particular utterance now here look at the word majesty where one is expected to find such a word majesty now look at this phrase my uh, my client denies all the accusations look at this phrase the, my client denies all the accusations now you agree with me that um, a, a person is expected to find uh, this particular utterance in the court of law or in the field of law and these words might be given out by an advocate is telling um, the the judge or the magistrate that his client denies all the accusations or it's a special way of addressing a judge by uh, using such a title your majesty they may use the, the word your lordship again they may use your excellence all these are uh, the formal way of addressing uh, the judge so obvious uh, one is expected to find this particular utterance at the court of law so um, we just move again my dear students to another uh, expression you are watching Darasa online here we come Moses clear the ball away from the goal my dear students the same formula look at the words the word go Moses is just a name of a, of a person but this Moses cleared the ball away from the goal now where do we expect I know uh, for the uh, soccer fans uh, you quickly tell um, this particular utterance where one can find this particular utterance so I believe um, um, you agree with me that uh, one expect to find this particular utterance in soccer field or in the sports Elena where the comment commentator is um, commenting about the the soccer match which is going on so the commentator may be on the field live doing his job seeing Moses clearing the ball away from the goal the commentators tend to use the so-called spontaneous language because uh, the commentator is on this uh, on the field commenting uh, acts or the situation going on in the field so my dear students uh, let us move again to another utterance here are the other utterances I know in the said area that each field each discipline has its own uh, special professional uh, 
terms. Now, look at this one. Don't ask for a car. Ask for a Porsche car. Now, uh, again, um, look at this word. Don't ask for a car. Ask for a Porsche car. Where one can come across with this particular utterance? Again, you agree with me. That uh, a person, a, one is expected to find this in adverts or advertisement. One is expected uh, to find this in the, um, in the newspaper or in the, on the television. One is advertising uh, the car. Now, is convincing the client that they should stop uh, asking themselves about a car. They should always think of um, buying or owning a Porsche car, which is very expensive, very comfortable, like Sharia's car, my dear students. So one is expected to find this language in, uh, uh, in advertisements, where this product, a Porsche car, is being ad advertised that people, uh, the public, should uh, go and buy uh, such car and not other cars. So, uh, it's convincing the public. Dear students, just again, go to another. Mind your heard. Now, where do you expect to find such utterance? Again, you'll agree with me that one is expected um, to find this uh, particular utterance. For example, uh, in the field of, or in, the, in, uh, in uh, uh, public cars, like in the bus, and it's written on the, uh, maybe uh, on the door, as people steps in or embark, embark in, there is su such a word, mind your head. It's a warning. It gives people a warning that, that be careful and embark into a car. But again, one may see this particular um, uh, utterance in the public buildings, in a hotel building, where um, maybe there are steps, so it, it warns the, 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 the people, especially those who are tall enough, that they may hit their head. So it, it, there's a warning somewhere they are written, um, mind your head. Look here, my, my dear students. Belt on. Again, uh, one may see this um, um, in the missile transport. People are being warned. Or I've, I've, I've been reminded that whenever you embark into a car, you have to put a belt on. Or maybe in the flight, the cabin crew is uh, reminding the passengers in the flight that they should put on the belt. That before, or the driver has to put on the, on the belt before starting driving. Now, back to you. Have you ever seen this uh, particular utterance? Obviously, yes. Dear students, here again is our uh, expression, take beaker. It starts with take beaker, add water, add one drop of sulfuric acid, shake, and then observe. Where do you expect to find such particular utterance? Where it starts by commanding, it starts by commanding verbs like take, add, add, shake, observe. Where do you expect to find that particular? Now, you'll be able again to tell um, that one is expected to find this particular utterance in the lab or laboratory where the lab technician or attendant is giving an instruction to the students. Maybe they are, they are about to perform. Now for them to, uh, to perform such an uh, experiment, they have to undergo some steps, some procedures. Now here are the procedures. That the first procedure is to take a beaker, add water, Add one drop of sulfuric acid, shake, and then observe. So it's pure instructional kind of language, where it is it is it is expected to uh, to be found in laboratory. 
I believe when you are in Form 3 or in Form 2 something, you heard such a language from a lab or from a chemistry teacher or biology teacher instructing you on how to perform something by steps. My dear students, let us now go to our second question. Before going to our second question, let us have a, a short break. Then, come back. Stay tuned. You are watching Darasa Online. Dear students, welcome back to our second session. Now, our question reads, describe graphological features of language of advancement use five points. Now, my students, the word describe should be well understood. To describe means giving details on how something looks like. That you are giving features that explains how something looks like. But again, we should be very careful. We should also understand the word graphology or graphological features. Now leave alone the word features. Think of uh, gra graphology or graphological. Remember, markers of style. And I believe um, you have studied the, uh, all those uh, styles or markers of style. Markers of style with your teachers. So leave alone other markers of styles. Now, confine yourself to this particular um, style or marker. Now, with the word uh, 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 graphological or graphology, in the way something is written or presented, let me come back. I'm saying the word graphology means the way something is being presented or something is being written or printed. Now, there are so many ways of, um, of writing things. There are so many ways of printing some things. Now, here you are, you are asked to tell about graphological features in the field of advancement and not otherwise. So, again, continue confining yourself to this particular field of advancement and not otherwise. Remember, each field, each discipline has its own style of writing or printing, which is different from the way um, uh, other style, let's say, uh, the field of advancement, the way uh, the, it's, graphol it's graphological is different from the field of biology. The field of geography, the field of, ma of mathematics. Now, if I'm to ask you, what are those are the graphological features? I believe you will be able to tell. So the question, just want you uh, to use only five points. Now, before going to um, uh, to the description, let us look at this particular advert. It's a Global Education Link Limited an agents of overseas education. Back to the question. It says, describe the graphological features of language of advancement. And here is our advert. It's a Global Education Link Limited, an agents of overseas education. Now, describe this Advert, my dear students. Look at the way this advert has been written. Look at the words. Look at the, the way the, the words have been designed. Look one letter after the other. Look at the letter G. Then come to the next. Then look at the letter R. Then come to B, A, and L. Now, is this the same way, the same as um, doing like this? 
It's obvious no. The way this particular advice has been written is quite different from this particular, uh, the way have been scribbled here. Now, look at the colors in this particular adverts. Look at the, uh, um, the boarding. The words, the words have been boarded. The letters are, are so thick. Uh, think ink has been used to make this uh, word or letters appear more clearer. But again, it, this particular word or adverts, it has some different colors. Look at this color here and this one here. Over here, if I'm to ask you how many colors are found in this particular adverts. So this Global Education Link Limited advertises its services to the public. It wants the public to use this particular link or to use this, this particular frame to access overseas education. But the way it appears, or graphologically, it has used um, uh, capital letters. It has used colors. The letters are bordered. Look at the picture of the world or earth in this particular O. It has been used technically. It has used abbreviation. The word limited. The word G-E-L. All these are um, tells the way or the way um, uh, something is being printed or something is being written. It's all about graphology. Each style of writing, my dear students, has got its uh, own reason. So, as you come across with different adverts, the printed ones, be able to think that why did they uh, decide to put the capital letters? Why did they decide to board the, the letters are bordered? Why did they use different colors? Why do they use um, uh, these abbreviations or acronyms? There's a use of acronyms here. EGL and the word uh, this um, LTD, limited. That's all about graphology. The way something is being written or printed. It's all about graphology. My dear students, let's just again look another picture. Look at the word Global Education Link. Now it advertises uh, the services that it offers. And here is a career which is being advertised that people or the clients should opt for this career. Now, look at the capital letters which, are, which have been used in this particular um, advert. Look at the colors. If I'm to ask you how many colors are uh, um, found in these particular adverts, you'll be able to tell. The, the use of picture of a human being. Now, each style or each technique used in this particular uh, advert has a reason, has a purpose. And don't take for granted. The one who prepares these particular adverts wants to capture the, uh, the eyes of the viewers. If the heading here or the heading here would have been written in a small letter, people won't be, uh, won't be able to look at it or to view. But again, uh, the heading is in the capital letter. It has colors or it has been colored. And not a single color. There are, uh, there are two different colors. The word career, right here, it is in the capital letters. And it has been colored. But again, it is bordered. All these have been done, have been performed with a reason. Subheading, it says, uh, in health, cardiovascular technology. Again, comes to uh, the picture of a heart. And down here, it, it tells, for more information, you may visit to... Uh, Visit this page, 
Facebook page, Instagram page, Twitter. Again, you may uh, call this particular number for further information about this career. Now, my dear students, having seen uh, the two pictures here, the first one, this one, and the next one right here. Now, back to the question. It says now, describe the graphological features of the language of advancement. Just use only five points. So, this uh, our, our adverts, which are uh, graphologically printed, which again, uh, it has pictures, a picture of a human being, a picture of a heart. It has uh, capital letters. It has used colors, different colors. It has some head, uh, subheading or headline. It is bolded, etc. Now, describe um, uh, graphologically now. So you'll be able now to tell that um, this particular graphological features of language of advancements includes it has heading or uh, headline or headings and normally the, he the, head the heading is written in the capital letters as you have seen um, in, the, in, the, in the two pictures or in the two adverts but again boarding it's been described by having this, um, uh, by, uh, by being boarded. The letters are thick, have been boarded. Why boarding? In order to capture the eyes of the viewers or the eyes of the public. But again, capitalization, or I mean colors. Students, you have seen different colors used in such um, adverts. I've displayed for you. Or I displayed, um, I displayed in some few minutes back. But again, um, capitalization. Look at those letters. The headline were capitalized. But again, use of pictures. In sometimes uh, diagrams. In some cases, even gloves. They're being used. The pictures also captures your eyes. Again, uh, the paragraphs, they are so clear. The language of adverts or adver advertisement tends to use very clear paragraphs. And the paragraphs are very short, like two or three lines. My dear students, remember, an advert must be very short. A long uh, ad uh, uh, adverts or advertisement bores the public. People need very few information about your service. People need a um, uh, few words to tell about your product or your service you are offering. Don't pump as, or as you prepare your adverts or your ad advertisement don't pump people with so much information. People are in a hurry. They just need only a few information. Very brief one. Very short. And there below, put your contact address. People, those people who will be interested, or the customers who will be interested, will give you a phone call. Or will visit your website. Or will visit your, um, um, your Facebook page or Instagram or Twitter, etc. That's why um, an advert is normally short, very short. Having that said, I believe now you are able now to, uh, to prepare your own advertisement, including um, uh, all those features. You are now able to prepare your advertisement and write all uh, graphologically, include all the graphological features. My dear students, I'm now convinced that you are able now to tell 
the graphological features of language of advert advertisement of language of adv uh, advertisement but again if you are told or if you are asked to prepare your own advertisement or prepare your own adverts telling people about your service you are offering let's say you are you are owning a school. So you are told now to prepare an ad advertisement to tell the public the subjects that we are teaching or the services we are offering and convincing customers to come to your school. Now you are told to prepare your advertisement. Now, graphologically, how are you going to do that? So, be now ready to come across with such a question to prepare your own adverts, including all those graphological features like um, head, uh, headings, boarding, use of colors, use of uh, capital letters or capitalization, use of pictures or diagrams or gloves use of clear paragraphs, etc. Use of um, acronyms like the one we have seen from this one. Global Education Link Limited. Now you can ask yourself why this uh, word has been shortened. Now this is very common. The use of abbreviation in language of advancement is very common. It saves space. By saving space now, um, it, uh, it uses again very few words to avoid boredom to the public. If such a word would be written like uh, education link limited, that would be very long. So the, the, uh, the one who composed this has made this very much short. Dear students, let us continue with our subject. Here is... Um, will be your assignment. Go and study about other markers of style. For example, remember, we were dealing with uh, graphological features. Now, um, the question may, be, may, may, may come into different um, uh, phrases or may, may, may be asked in a different way. You may be told, to describe the syntactical features of language of advancement. This syntactical Features of language of my dear students. Now, here is your question. Of which you may uh, do it, do it at your own pace. But describe the, the syntactical features of language of advert, um, advancement. Now you should be very clear with this particular word, syntactical. In some books, they prefer to use a uh, grammatical. grammatical features of language of uh, advancement. But again, not necessarily being a uh, language of advancement. One may, uh, you may be even told, you may be asked, for example, language of, of law. 
or religious language. Religious language. Or ICT language. So each field, you may be you may be asked from different disciplines or field, but remember, focus on syntactical features. Now we should know all the syntactical features or grammatical features. You'll be so surprised seeing a student instead of giving uh, or describing syntactical features, then we see some graph graphological features. There again will be wrong. Do you remember the syntactical features of language of advancement? I believe uh, you are aware. Now, go through this question, uh, then I believe you will be okay. Dear students, this mark the end of our meeting today. Thank you so much for your attention. Till next time. Thank you. Bye.